How's everyone doing? Great. Well, thanks so much for coming. If you're in the back and you don't have a little free koozie and sticker, there are some more in the front. So just before you leave, you don't have to move, but come up and get one because we definitely want y'all to have them. So let's see here. Let's see. Great. So we are April and Tyler Roberts, um, same last name. Y'all might assume we are partners in business, but also partners in life. Um, so we're so excited to be back at ClioCon this year speaking. Last year we spoke and did a whole marketing workshop that was um, really on everything. And so I think we tried to jam pack that into two hours, but we're really excited this year that we're able to narrow in and talk about websites. Although even as we were getting started, we were like, oh my gosh, we could do more with SEO and all these things. So we are going to do our best to fit as much as we can into 75 minutes, but um, we'll, we also have some extra things for y'all to work on um, after you leave so that you can still have some more information about SEO. Um, so we are located in Charleston, South Carolina, although we do have a few remote team members that are all over the US and Canada. Um, so yeah, we're super excited to be here and share this information with y'all. I feel like we were saying we talk about this all the time. And so, you know, it was really fun to put it together or formalize, but we have these conversations with attorneys every single day. So a little bit about us, we are a full service marketing agency. Um, what that means is that we do everything from branding, we build websites, we also do SEO, PPC, social media, social ads, email marketing, what am I forgetting? Um, lead captures, and um, we're building out a ton of funnels right now. Uh, we've been um, doing a lot of eBooks, any sort of one-off design work, um, photography, videography, we're your one-stop shop for all of your marketing. So we are excited to share with y'all all of the information that we have learned and gathered over the past five years of being in business and share that with y'all. And hopefully it'll help to make your firms a little bit better. Yeah, so today we are gonna talk about five different things that every law firm website needs. Um, and before I go into this, you know, one of the things that we wanna talk about is amplifying your impact, which is the theme of this year's conference. And so thinking about your website, not as just a way to generate more business, but also to serve your clients and serve your community. A lot of times this will be like the first time they're hiring an attorney. So we wanna use this website to kind of break down the barriers to entry, educate them, help them feel a little bit more comfortable um, and it kind of goes into our motto, which is making the law more human, just make it more approachable, um, a little less intimidating for people. So we're gonna talk about creating a clear message. We're gonna talk about authentic photo and video content, social proof, lead magnets and resources, as well as developing a call to action. Um, and one thing that you don't see on here, um, which will be at the back of the workbook is SEO. So we talk a lot about SEO with our clients and it can get really technical. There's a lot of things that you can do with like onsite optimization, offsite optimization and so forth. We do have a basic checklist that if you did build your own website or you use a freelancer, you could use that to kind of check the box and make sure that you have kind of best practices in place. Um, but one of the things that I want to remind everyone in here about is that if we optimize your website, but we don't do any of these other fundamental like things to your website, then we're not gonna get the conversions that we're looking for. Um, we wanna make sure that whatever we're putting together is going to appeal to our ideal clients. Um, it's gonna be conversion focused. And it's gonna get those people coming to your website to actually fill out a form or make a phone call. Um, and the last thing I'll say about that is if you do all of these things, then your website will produce the best overall user experience. And at the end of the day, that's what Google wants. They want to provide their users with the best user experience possible. They want to provide um, the best results possible. So if you can develop a you know, a client-centered law firm website, then you're gonna be able to accomplish that. Great, so everyone should have a workbook in front of you. So the style of this is a workshop. So we're not gonna talk to you all the whole time. We're gonna go through this workbook and fill it out. So the first page that you're gonna to turn to in your workbook is the developing a conversion focused website. So what we want y'all to do is just quickly, I mean, you can pull up your website on your phone, on your laptop, you may know this off the top of your head, but let's spend about five minutes going through this and just write down everything that's listed out here. So like write a one sentence description of what you do. I think a lot of times we see, we go to a website and there's like two or three paragraphs like explaining, which is, is good. Like obviously you need to go more in depth, but what is that one sentence that explains what you do? 
and then go through and check off. Do you have the following photos, videos, frequently asked questions, all of that. And then you can kind of just go down and we'll, we'll give you all about five minutes to do that. And so Tyler and I will be walking around as well as Bree, who is our business development manager. So if y'all have any questions as we're doing this, please raise your hand and we can come over and help. Um, but we'll be sharing and then we'll do a little bit of a, um, we'll do one of the pages in the workbook. So that'll be the style for this today. And this will be a page that you'll come back to at the end. So if you can't fill out every single form or uh, field here, don't worry about that. We'll come back to it and you'll have an opportunity to revise what you put down here. But we'll walk around and answer any questions that you have. Awesome. Can we get some music going while we're walking? All right, so we had some great questions and we will definitely be coming back to this if you get a break and you're like, gosh, now I know what my CTA is, which we'll be going into that a little bit more. You can always flip back. You may not be able to finish every single page, but um, we wanna give y'all as much time as we possibly can. So thank y'all for doing that. And we'll go on to the next part. Awesome, so now that we kind of have just a framework of what we're gonna cover today, the first thing we wanna talk about is clear messaging. And so I was talking to April about this earlier today, back in law school, when I was in trial ad, we talked about the theory of the case, right? So like when you're, when you're presenting to a jury, you wanna have a theory of the case and you don't wanna deviate from that. And obviously there's a lot of things that you can introduce into evidence. There's a lot of things you can talk about, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure you have a really clear message that resonates with the jury and tells your client's story. That's exactly what we wanna do here. We don't want to confuse anyone. We wanna make sure that they know exactly what you do um, I always say that Q, or clear is better than cute or clever. We want to make sure that um, even if you're using a tagline, that it clearly explains what you do. Um, so one of the things that we want to go over here in the, um, in the worksheet are a few of these questions that will help us determine that. So number one, you want to ask, what problem do you solve for your clients? Um, a lot of times it's something as simple as they've been injured and they need money to pay their medical bills, right? So think that basic of, you know, what problem is your client facing and what are they trying to do to, to get out of that problem? The next thing you want to explain is how you solve that problem differently than other law firms. So this is kind of where that marketing comes in. This is where you can talk about how you approach the solution a little bit differently than let's say, you know, XYZ law firm down the street. Is it technology? Is it uh, the, the care and attention that you bring to the table? Is it your experience? Is there something that sets you apart from the other firms that allows you to solve this problem differently than your competitors? And then number three, have you successfully solved those problems before? Um, we're gonna talk about social proof here in a minute where we can demonstrate how we've successfully solved those problems, but it can be as simple as saying, we've helped hundreds of other clients just like you solve this problem that you're facing today. And then finally, what does life look like for a client once their problem is solved? A lot of times we like to think about them hiring the best attorney, but at the end of the day, your clients don't wanna hire an attorney. They wanna solve their problem, right? So show them what life is gonna look like after representation is completed and you're you know, a thing of the past. Um, so we're gonna go through this worksheet real quick and we're gonna answer some of these questions. Um, before we do, I wanna give you just one quick example of a client that we've worked with and it might be hard to read, but I can kind of read it here for you. Um, it's a, a really short couple of paragraphs that really describes what this particular attorney does and who she serves. It just says, are you a business owner going through divorce? You may be worried about going to court, the cost of hiring an attorney, or whether you will receive a fair and equitable result. Those feelings are normal. We provide the resources, tools, and experience you need to get divorced on your own terms without going to court. So it's very clear who she's talking to. It's business owners who are going through divorce who want to avoid court. She's empathizing with them, letting them know that those feelings are normal. And then she's giving them kind of a plan of action of how they are going to overcome that fear, overcome those issues and get this issue resolved for them. Awesome, so we'll spend about five minutes going through this. We would love for someone to share. So just as you're doing it, feel free to ask questions. And if you're really excited to share, let us know and we'll bring a mic over to you. All right, so who do we have that would like to share any brave souls? Oh yes, right up here. So my one sentence description of what, what I do is help uh, with all matters involving estates and those things that touch them. Um, so estates are made up of personal property, real property, business assets, and um, 
we do both personal matters as well as business matters and really help people both with planning and also helping families with after um, the decedent passes. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Do you want to talk any about um, creating a clear marketing message? Is there um, anything specific on that that you wrote down that you'd love to share? Well, so my descriptive H1 header, I'll start there, is it's the Law Office of Barry Janae. Our acronym is LOBJ. And uh, LOBJ is passionate about serving our clients in their estates and related business and personal matters. Awesome. Thank you. And, you know, it's your lucky day. Bree is going to pass out a T-shirt for sharing. So thank you. We thought uh, some can, I, can I add my okay. call to action? Yes, you add that. Yeah. Um, so I really don't like cookie cutter and inside the box call now. I think most personal in injury attorneys like are, it's just offensive in terms of how blatant their um, you know their calls calls to action are. Um, so I was thinking, no better time than right now to call. I love that. That's great. Great job. And we'll get to workshop CTAs here in just a minute. Um, help you all come up with something like that. So that was the first page. Does anyone have um, anything that they'd like to share on that second page with creating a clear marketing message? Would anyone want to share that? Uh, the problem that my clients face are protecting their creative works from copycats and monetizing the, those works. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. And Bree will run back there. Awesome. So we will go on to the next section, but don't worry, we'll be having plenty more things to share. So up next is my favorite section. So it's all about having authentic photo and video content. And so this is such a huge part of your marketing. Um, this is something that we do in house. We have a team, but then we also obviously have freelancers all over the country who travel for us because we find that this is such an important part of marketing. So we want to talk through that and really give you some ideas for that photo and video content that y'all can create and hire someone local in your community to do this. So 90% of the information that is um, processed by the brain is visual. So, you know, if you go to a website and it's just all stock images or um, maybe no video or anything, it's, it's going to be really hard to connect really fast. It's probably when you're going to see a high bounce rate. And we want to really make sure that um, you're able to keep people on your website as long as possible and convert them. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is avoiding stock images. Um, how many of y'all have ever connected to someone when you go to their website and they're on a laptop just like smiling up at you? Like, I know I haven't. And so we really want to make sure that um, we're, we're not utilizing those. It's okay to use a stock photo here and there. But, you know, a couple things with the stock photos, anyone can use the same stock photo. So maybe they're on your website and they go to their competitor's web or go to your competitor's website and y'all could be using the same photo. So you want to make sure that yeah, like you're able to lean in with who you are and really showcase you and your firm. Um, stock images really don't make a human connection. And so, you know, a lot of times we always say when people contact an attorney, it could be the first time they're contacting an attorney and or going through the hardest thing they've gone through in their life. So it's really important to make a human connection and show them who they're going to be working with. So having that authentic photography and videography is super important. And it could misalign with the firm culture. So my favorite is when people say, you know, like we have a great team, we're all working together. And then you go to the website and you're like, where's the team? I don't see the team. And so, you know, make sure that you're showing your firm culture on your website through photos and videos. And the great thing about photography and videography is yes, you use them on your website, but you can use them so many other places. And I like to think it's fun whenever we do photos and videos in the office, because everyone gets to dress up and have a good time. So. Um, super fun to do that. Here are some examples of some authentic images that y'all can get if you do have a photographer come in. So professional headshots, no brainer. Literally right outside of this door, they're doing headshots. So if you don't have a headshot, please go get it done today. Um, it's okay if it's not your favorite photo ever. We, I feel like every time, like, I'm like, gosh, I wanna use this photo from like five years ago. That's okay, as long as you have a headshot, you're good. 
um, a high impact hero image. So this is when you go to your website. I like to call these masthead, um, but you go to your website is that first image that you see up there on your website. So making sure that that is something that reflects the firm. It could be a team photo. It could be a picture of you working with the potential client, whatever it is, that is the first thing that they're going to see on your website. So that's definitely something that's good to have an authentic photo for. Team photos. You know, I always say that how many of y'all want to do every single aspect of your business? I know that Tyler and I don't. So we want to showcase our team on the website. We want to showcase the client success managers. We want to showcase Bree. That's who they're going to be talking to. They're not always going to be talking to me and Tyler because as our business grows, you know, we have to do different things just like y'all do too. So if you do have team members, paralegals, office managers, make sure you highlight them. So that way they are calling the firm and not saying, oh, I want to talk to April and Tyler, but I'm excited to talk to your team. So lead with that. Um, office details. You know, kind of going back to putting yourself in your client's shoes, like people could be really uneasy about coming into an office or even calling, like, what's it look like? What what would it be like to go into this firm? So, you know, taking some detail shots, like show them what it will be like. Um, maybe you have like a coffee station or an espresso, whatever it is. Um, highlight that, like help put them at ease so that they're not intimidated coming into your office. I also love these office details because they're great to use on social media or in place of stock images where you would typically use them on a website. They're great just like filler photos for that. So um, it could be a candle, a little plant, whatever it is. Um, just getting those details is super important. And then lifestyle photos. Um, we have a client that is a huge Texas A&M fan. And he actually came down to Charleston to visit. And we were like, let's just do a photo shoot while you're here. And so he brought his cowboy boots and his Texas A&M shirt. And he, that is just who he is. He loves Texas A&M. And, you know, that really shows through on his website. Cause of course we have the photos of him in a suit and, you know, all of that, but he really wanted to showcase who he is. And we love on Fridays when we can post for, you know, game day and he's wearing that. So have fun with it. It doesn't all have to be stuffy, like lean into who you are. I'm sure you could tell like a lot of our photos have our dog Piper. We call her the chief disruption officer in the office. Um, Cause she does like to disrupt everyone. So. A lot of people do have dogs in the office, like take pictures with your dogs, like totally fine, like lean into who you are. You don't have to be anyone that you're not. Um, video content. So, I mean, we could go into a million things for videography, but love a brand video. 30 seconds, what do you do? Like have some B-roll footage, like any videographer is gonna know exactly what this means and how to get this. I also love it when we talked about the hero image for um, photography, but I love it when people have videos. We have that on our website. Obviously, you're not going to have talking going on, um, but just some B-roll footage of like movement on your website. I feel like that always encourages people to stop for a second and watch that. So super great. Um, frequently asked questions. Of course, like these are great to write out on your website, but how powerful would it be to have a video going through that frequently asked questions? Doesn't have to be all of them, but maybe two or three. And what I also love about this is if a client is asking you a question that you get all the time, you can send them a link to that page on your website and say, hey, I've actually answered this. Um, watch this video. I go through in depth of what that answer would be. And then if you want to even take it one step further, you could bake that into your process. And so you, before you get to that you know, phase of the case, you could always send that to them proactively and say, here's a couple questions that you might have as you're going through this. So there's lots of ways to utilize this. Testimonial videos, these are so powerful. We're gonna talk about reviews and everything, but like if you can get someone to sit down and get a testimonial video, this is amazing. It does not have to be like high tech. You do not have to have like a professional videographer. We did some yesterday at our booth, so it does not have to be anything crazy, but have someone share what their experience was like. And that encourages other clients of yours or potential clients to put themselves in their shoes and say, man, they can also help me. That would be really cool. Service overview video. So this is great to explain a little bit more about each service that you do. Um, and so you can put these on each page of the website that has the different service overviews. Um, so super great there. And then lifestyle videos. Um, I'm gonna go on to this next um, slide in a second so you can see, but 
Um, we have a client in Santa Monica. They're huge surfers. Tyler actually met them surfing when we lived out in San Diego, and that's how we started working with them. And they just had a shoot last week, and they wanted to make sure that at the end of the day, they could all go out and surf for a little while, and they could get some shots of that. So we have not gotten them back yet, but I can't wait to see. But this is that firm. So y'all can actually see a little bit about how we have utilized all of the things that we've just discussed with photo and video on their website. And so I can't wait to put in there um, all the surfing videos and all the new stuff. But you can see there's lots of different um, like photos that they have and videos. I think I saw an espresso machine, um, really leaning in with their team, their office, what makes them different, not your typical law firm that you think of when you go into. So we really wanted to lean into who they were and make it fun. And I'll say one thing too, we're talking about like these higher production shoots, you can use your phone to do a lot of this stuff. If you have someone else in the office, you can get a good headshot, even with an iPhone, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a photo of yourself on your website. And with videos like this FAQ videos, the service overview videos, you can sit down with Zoom and record those. You can do loom.com, that's one of my favorites. Um, and there's so many free tools that you can use to create these types of assets for your firm. Um, we had a client do a selfie and just using like a little bit of AI was able to create a really professional headshot. And it was leaps and bounds better than just using a generic stock image on his website. Great. So we are going to go on into the next section. We have some different um, sheets in here to go through it. They're a little out of order, but we'll guide y'all. Um, but we'll go on into social proof. Yeah. So talked a little bit about social proof, um, talking about like how you've successfully handled cases in the past. Social proof really comes down to a few different things. We'll talk about that in a second. But this is just going to be that proof that's going to stack up the evidence in your favor, right? So when you're going to trial or you're preparing a case, you're going in there and you're trying to uh, demonstrate, you know, the, um, you're trying to demonstrate, you know, like how your client is going to be successful in the case, whether they're not guilty or not liable, what, whatever it may be. Uh, but a lot of times we forget that we're building a case for ourselves and for our businesses. And this is really where social proof can be leveraged. So there's um, a really interesting statistic. This is probably just one of a million. Um, this is probably the most common one that I've seen though, but 75% of consumers regularly use reviews to make purchasing decisions. Now, I think about anything that you've bought in the last month, you've probably read the reviews. Um, I think about every time I get a recommendation to go to a restaurant, I never just book a table at that restaurant. I always go to Google my business and look at the reviews. I always go on the website. I always go on to Instagram and I do due diligence. And that's just for like one hour and maybe a hundred dollars. So when you're talking about spending a thousand, two thousand, you know, maybe multiple thousands of dollars with an attorney, they're going to do their due diligence and they're going to want to see reviews. They're going to want to see social proof. So there's three forms of social proof that we really like to see on every website. Number one is testimonials and reviews. As you guys know, getting these are really important. Google My Business is obviously a, a great place to solicit those. Avo is another great place. Sometimes though, due to like the confidential nature of cases, you may not be able to publicly display those reviews and that's okay. What we recommend in those cases is just reaching out to your clients and asking for a review like by email. We have a client that does handwritten reviews at the end of each case and we can add this to her website and it's non-descriptive, there's no names, but we're able to use those reviews on the site. The third one is case results and case studies. So obviously in personal injury, we can look at case results. We can look at like a, a final judgment or award, um, but B2B clients, um, estate planning clients, family law clients, like how do we demonstrate that? And we can look at case studies. So without divulging too much information, we can talk about how we took a client from point A to point B, what their problems were, how we were able to solve those problems and what the ultimate outcome was. I mean, it's just a great way to kind of demonstrate the value that you bring to those cases. And the third one is press publications and awards. So, you know, I'm sure that there's a handful of people here who have the super lawyers badge on their website. Um, you know, we never say that there's like mission critical, but it is kind of like shorthand to say, hey, this person has been verified. Um, you know, you can trust this attorney. And so we always look for like local awards, um, those national awards, uh, anything that you can put on your website to kind of demonstrate that credibility and build that authority with your clients. So testimonials, as we just said, humans are social creatures. They're gonna look to other people. They're gonna say, what was their experience like? And testimonials are a way to demonstrate that 
you've successfully handled this case, but not only that, you made someone really happy at the end of it. With case results, same things. You know, we want to provide proof to your potential client that you have the ability to solve their problem. It's one thing to say that you can do it and that you're, you know, one of the top attorneys. It's a whole other thing to like look at the numbers and let them do the talking for you. And finally, press and awards. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on these. Um, a lot of times there are local awards that you can apply to and the barrier for winning those is fairly low because there's not that much competition for them. So do a little bit of due diligence. Like we like to put them in a spreadsheet and just look at when the applications are each year. And then we'll just have that on hand and we'll just apply for those as we go through. Um, we have clients that do the same as well. Great. So now we're going to work in the workbook. So what y'all are going to do is we're going to go through three pages. We're going to come back to write a compelling call to action. So just skip that one. But we're going to go through testimonials, case results, and awards and press. So take a little bit of time. Go through this. Look at your Google My Business, your Avid profile. Maybe you can say, oh, I have an email from a client that was super happy when everything was done. Maybe I can use that clip. It doesn't have to be exactly a Google My Business review. Whatever it is, testimonials, write that down to say like, oh, I'm going to have Brie, you know, get this from this client. Like whatever it is that you need to do, just to say when you leave here, I'm going to have at least five new reviews. Um, case results. What are five cases that you've had that you can highlight? And then awards and press. Maybe it's that you haven't had that yet, but let's utilize this time to brainstorm some good ideas for that. So I love to just look in the area and say, okay, what are great awards that we can focus on and look into? And then it may be that that just passed, but if you go ahead and make a spreadsheet and you have that information, you'll know when to apply for those awards for next year. So the biggest thing is just getting started. So um, y'all spend a little bit of time working on that. We'll walk around again and answer any questions. And if you want to go back in your workbook as you finish this up, um, absolutely do that. We can help in those sections as well. All right, so we're going to do a fun little game to get everyone up and moving. I'm sure y'all are like, yeah, yeah, April, that's cool. But here's what we're going to do. So we know there's a million different ways to get testimonials, but we're going to focus on Google My Business just so that it's fair and we're all looking at the same thing. So everyone stand up if you have more than 10 Google My Business reviews. Stay standing if you have more than 15. Stay standing if you have more than 20. More than 30. More than 40. More than 50. Did every, oh, okay, so, sorry, it's like blinding a little bit. Okay, so more than 50. More than 55. More than 60 more than 70 are, are there or was that one in the back is one in the back right here oh awesome uh, here so whoever had like the most at the, in the back can you share with us what is your tip to getting google my business reviews um we have 159 and we send reviews to all of our clients after we finish the case it's just part of the process do you have it baked into your process or are you manually sending it? It is baked into the process. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. We're going to give you a t-shirt. Brie will come back there. Oh, and then we have one more over here. Who would like to share? I think the mic's running over. We have uh, 76 reviews, but we, we don't have it baked in, um, but we're going to. <laughs> so how are how are you doing it manually? Like who's doing that in your office? So um, my case manager asks for them for it, and we'll send them a text with a link to that opens right up to it. Um, and we usually we try to time it because not all of our outcomes are happy. We try to time it at a time when they're pleased with us, and, and, or or afterwards when they appreciate the way we treated them, even if the case didn't go their way. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And so one thing that he mentioned here is that they make it really easy to get the review. So they don't say, go to my Google, my business review. They put the link in the message 
and there's a way to do it where it opens directly up and someone just sees a little portal and they can leave the review and send it on. Another little trick that I like um, is asking for feedback throughout representation. That way there's no surprises at the end of it. So if they get used to giving you feedback throughout representation, just asking like, hey, how am I doing? Like, are, you know, are we meeting your goals? Are we meeting your expectations? And that way, by the time you get to the end of representation, they are um, accustomed to giving you that feedback and they're gonna be more than likely, uh, more likely to give you that review. Absolutely. And if you're not in the habit of asking or having someone in your law firm ask, I was just talking with someone and I had said how we had done competitions in our office of who could get the most Google My Business reviews. There's so many fun things you can do with that. I've even worked somewhere else in the past where I think we had to get to like a certain number and they took everyone out for wine tasting. And then we did like competitions for who was the top. I was like the second from the top, so a little bitter, but it's okay. So like make it fun for your team. And once they get in the habit, it's just a habit and you don't even have to think about it. Um, so a couple tips and tricks to get those numbers up. All right, so we're gonna talk a little about lead magnets. Um, and you're probably wondering why are we you know, putting this into a website presentation? I think a lot of times we expect people who come to our website to immediately want to call us. They'll see that first you know, image of us, they'll see a call to action, and they're like, yep, this is a firm for me. In a lot of cases, that's just not how it works. Um, clients need to warm up to you. And so one thing that we've seen a lot of success with is building out lead magnets or resources that people can download and they can use that information to interact with your firm and learn a little bit more. So we're gonna talk about a few different types of lead magnets, um, but essentially it's just a piece of content that you're gonna trade for someone's contact information. They're gonna willingly give that to you. It could be a name, phone number, email, whatever you want to um, receive from them. And that allows you to continue to communicate with them and build that trust. So interesting statistic here, 50% of marketers who start using lead magnets report higher conversion rates. You know, I think everyone in here would love to have a higher conversion rate on their website. Um, it's not as easy as just changing the button colors and moving some things around. That is you know, a way to improve conversion rates on your site, but we can capture a lot more information from our users um, if we're willing to give them kind of that first step or that stepping stone uh, towards hiring us. So a few different examples that we have here are eBooks, PDF checklists, quiz funnels, webinars, case studies, white papers. You've probably all seen this before. If you're on social, you know, there's so many ads out there that will say, download this white paper, or download this ebook, or watch this webinar. Um, and there's no reason why you can't use that for your firm. And we're, you know, I think one of the things for, for us as we're looking at this is like, you probably have this information on hand already. You probably have a checklist that you're using during intake, right? You could put that into a PDF and use that as your download. Um, if you are a B2B and you have a white paper on um, you know, case study in your industry, uh, there's no reason why you can't just format that and package it up and use that as a PDF download just to capture that email address. I um, mean, I think too for, um, you know, for clients that maybe don't speak English, um, a webinar is a great way to demonstrate your ability to, to speak their language, right? So you're able to explain it to them in a way that they understand and it's really accessible. So these are just some ideas. There's obviously other types of lead magnets out there, but these are the ones that we most commonly see. So we're gonna talk about creating a lead magnet for your law firm's website. Um, three questions that we can uh, ask here. What problem will the lead magnet solve? So if it's, you know, they just don't know where to go, they uh, never hire an attorney before, they wanna make sure they're making the right decision, maybe that's all your PDF does. Um, maybe that's all your webinar does. Um, if they are uh, estate planning, for example, what do they need to have in place before they come to your law firm? If they're seeking a divorce, what are they, needing to curate, um, what kind of information, what kind of documents do they need before they have an initial consultation with you? Number two, what medium would best serve your client? You know, an ebook may be great for a, you know, an avid reader, but for someone who doesn't like to read, that may not be the best form of um, information for them. A webinar may be a better uh, way to serve that particular client. And then number three, what information do you wanna collect in exchange for the content? So a lot of times you'll see um, you know, just an email capture, but maybe you want that first name so we can personalize the messages to them. Maybe you want their, um, their phone number so you can send them a text message or give them a call. I think a lot of times we're a little trigger shy when it comes to reaching out to leads. I mean, how powerful would it be if someone were to download that lead magnet, they give you their phone number, and then you call them the next day and say, hey, you know, I hope it's okay that I'm calling you. You gave us your phone number. I saw that you downloaded this PDF that we created. 
I wanted to see if there's any other questions that we could answer for you. And it's just that really nice, gentle first step to hiring an attorney and it gives them a lot of value upfront. So this is one of our clients um, that has this long-term care guide and they see a lot of success with this. Um, they work with clients on an ongoing basis, um, a lot of times for decades at a time. They have their clients coming back in to do evaluations with them and they're always updating their estate plan. And so they use this as a way to kind of bridge that gap between being interested in becoming a client. Um, and it's just five frequently asked questions about el elder law care. So this can be for an adult child, it could be for an aging parent, um, but there's information in here that kind of helps them bridge that gap. Um, just a few things we're pointing out here is just the simplicity of the title and also just a really clear call to action. So we're not doing anything crazy, nothing super special. We're just basically calling attention to this information and helping people and guiding them to um, taking that first step. Great. So how many of y'all have a lead magnet on your website currently? Well, we're going to build one. So if you don't have one, that's okay. You will have one by the time you leave. If you do have one, maybe you use this as an opportunity to update it or create another one. So um, we'll spend a little bit of time walking around, going through this with y'all, um, and then we'd love to have someone share. All right, do we have anyone who would like to share a little bit about their lead magnet? It could be one that you already have on your website or maybe one that you just brainstorm to create. Anybody? Having trouble seeing with the light, it's a little blinding. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, should I just walk through my page? Uh, so we actually do offer um, in-person seminars as well as webinars for estate planning. So we already do some of this, but as far as the problem that it would solve, I said, uh, make complicated world of estate planning or probate estate administration feel accessible and understandable and like something clients can actually tackle with our help. Um, and then five questions that would cover what is estate planning? How do I protect my assets? Uh, avoiding things like conservatorship, probate estate, guardianship, and uh, see, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Uh, when should I establish an estate plan? And what are the first steps I should take? Uh, and then I didn't finish the last one, but I listed two benefits, becoming educated before committing to legal services and uh, just better caring for family. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. That's wonderful. Great, so we've got about 15 minutes. We're gonna zip through the last little section and then hopefully save a little bit of time um, for a couple questions at the end. So call to action. The goal with any call to action is to tell people exactly what you want them to do. Make it simple, easy to understand and actionable. So we're gonna talk through this a little bit. This is a page that's out of order in here. So we'll just go back a little bit. Um, so let's see, 2% is the average conversion rate of a web page. So this is not a landing page, not where you're having Google ads go to, just your typical website page. So. 2% is like not super high. So it's really important that we need to get as many people to know exactly what you want them to do when they do come to your website. So we're gonna talk through this. Um, what good is your website if it fails to convert visitors into leads? You know, it's something I talk a lot about with our clients is people get hung up on with SEO saying, hey, this specific keyword dropped, like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Or my overall traffic was down this month on our website. Like, I'm not saying those things are not important because they absolutely are. But what is most important is that we want to utilize your website as a way to convert those leads into clients. So the first step is for them to either call your office or fill out a form to reach out to y'all. And so that is the most important thing. So, you know, a lot of times you'll see that, you know, it'll be sessions were up or the, the keywords you are in the top three um, for, you know, a hundred keywords that you're tracking, whatever it is. But if your conversion rate is so terrible, that means there's something on your website that they're just not converting. And so it could be that your call to action is not easy to find, easy to understand. So we'll talk through that. 
Um, optimizing your CTA, prominent placements. Don't put it at the footer of a website where someone has to scroll and scroll and they're like, geez, what do they want me to do? You know, I love to have it um, in the menu bar right at the top, right hand corner, um, get help now, whatever it is. I like, I think we put it, I don't know, five or six places on the homepage. I mean, no one could ever forget what we want them to do. So that's super important. Customize the messaging. I love the phrase, get help now. Do whatever you want. Um, contact us, you know, like that's a little overused. Make it fun, make it really stand out. Use contrasting colors and icons. So if you have a branding package, with which hopefully y'all do, um, use an accent color. So make this where it really stands out on your web page, but it's not something that blends in. I love it when when you hover over it and it does like the inverse colors, that's really cool and really stands out. Um, and then leveraging social proof. I love to bake this in on your web page, maybe right around testimonials or case studies. So, you know, a potential client's reading it and they're like, oh my gosh, like look at what they did for this specific client. Um, their experience was great. And then the call to action's right there. So be strategic in where you place it and make it so it's not super hard to find. Um, here is an example of a website. So get started today. Um, you can see we've got it in the menu bar like we discussed. And then um, right there in that one section, when you hover over it, it does turn a different color. Um, and then right below that, you can see a testimonial that we've baked in. So um, just a really good example of what that looks like. Okay, so we're gonna spend, let's see, a couple minutes going back through the call to action section. So. Um, it is, let's see, I think it's right after, yeah, right after creating a clear marketing message, write a compelling call to action. So hopefully y'all have this on your website. If you don't, go ahead and work on one right now and um, we'll walk around and help, but we'll give y'all about two minutes to do this and then um, we'll save some time for the end. All right, so. I know y'all didn't have a ton of time, but do we have anyone who wants to share about their compelling CTA? Anybody? Oh, right here. <laughs> Bree helped me, but uh, I, I, we kind of settled on talk to an attorney. Uh, we think in our firm, or I think in our firm, we could probably handle that. We're not doing a stage or criminal offense where you might get thousands of calls. It's IP. It's mostly business to business. So we think we might be able to get away with that and not have be overwhelmed. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. So putting it all together, as you guys have probably noticed, this is like a very simple kind of checklist of things to have on your website. You know, we didn't talk uh, in depth on like SEO or anything really technical. These are all things that you could literally go and do tomorrow. And you know, whether you built your own website or you built it with an agency or a freelancer, these are all things that you can send over to them or that you can implement on your own. So hopefully you, know, hopefully you guys feel like really empowered to, to take action here. Um, and one of the reasons why we put together this list and, and made it so simple is that a lot of times we overcomplicate our websites. You know, We sit there and we try to think of a catchy tagline. We try to think of a, a fun image that we can put on the homepage when really it just comes down to a set of best practices and making sure that people feel welcome to your page, that they understand what you do and that they are able to get in contact with you. So this is just an example of one of the, the sites that we've built. Um, I mean, as you can see, it's nothing crazy, like nothing jumping out at you, but there's a few things I wanted to point out here that have made this law firm successful. Just for reference, they handle about 180 to 200 cases at any given time. And so it's a pretty high volume uh, firm, but it's a, it's a smaller team. And one thing that they really love is their team culture. You go into their office and it's like, I mean, it literally is like a family. Um, they have dogs running around, they're in casual clothes. Um, it's just a very warm and inviting atmosphere. So a big part of us working with them was making sure that people understood that when they walked in, that they weren't work, walking into a stuffy office and that they were gonna meet with someone who's experienced, but also down, um, down to earth. So we have a photo of the team behind this. This is actually a video, I and mean, it plays on a loop. Um, we have their tagline, which is you matter to us. This is on their billboards uh, across town. So we wanna make sure there was like some recognition there. Um, and then also 
You'll see right above that, we have a really descriptive um, header, which is your local Knoxville personal injury attorneys. Um, so it just tells people where they're located and what they do. Um, if you go back to that first page, that's part of this. Um, and then below that's just a really short, simple statement about what they do. Again, we're not trying to be super clever here, but it's just injured. Get the compensation, attention, and care you, de you deserve. Contact personal injury attorneys at G3 um, for a consultation today. You don't, uh, no fees unless we win. I mean, th there's nothing here that's like a secret sauce, but it's just putting it together in a way that's easy for someone to quickly see what they do and that this is the right law firm for them. You also see the buttons in contrasting colors. And then I love this little trick, putting the Google reviews right below the call to action. So it's 300 plus five-star Google reviews. So you have that social proof baked in there. Um, and then finally, you have a, a chat feature at the bottom. Um, there's so many great like free chat features and even paid ones that are low cost that you can add to your website. And it just gives people an, another opportunity to contact you. The one thing that you won't see on here is their ebook, but they do have an ebook that if you go on their website, there'll be a pop-up form or form on there where someone can fill that out. And it's just understanding um, car accident claims. So just kind of putting all this together, you can see that this isn't groundbreaking, but it's always fun to go through this workshop with attorneys and they go through it and they realize, oh, I'm missing you know, two out of five of these things. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add them onto my website this week. Um, I know we did the same thing for us and it's helped our business quite a bit. Awesome. So um, if anyone has any questions, we are going to be able to answer probably, I don't know, one or two um, before we head out. But we'll be in here for a little while longer as well as Bree. This is a link to Bree's calendar. If anyone wants us to walk through a website audit, talk through our recommendations, we can absolutely do that. Um, you can also come and talk to her here if that's easier. Um, but we'd love to take a couple questions if anyone has any. Do you have any recommendations for people that do business to business marketing? Like I'm employment defense and I'm not, my practice is not consumer oriented. So I'm not looking for the person who's Googling, you know, they got fired and they're upset. I'm looking for the business side. I'll go back to the example I gave with getting the restaurant recommendation. Um, you know, I'm still going to look at the reviews. I'm going to do my due diligence. So even if it's a referral based business or business to business, they're still going to do a lot of due diligence before they um, decide who they're going to hire and who they're going to work with. So I think a lot of these, these things still apply, like a clear headshot. Like maybe you don't need a, a website full of, you know, photography and videography that showcases your office culture. Maybe you just need a really clean headshot on there and maybe a team photo on the homepage. That can really go a long way. I still think social proof is extremely important. I know with a lot of B2B clients, if they're working with executives, they may not be willing to leave a Google review, but getting a written review from them and having their headshot um, on your homepage, again, goes a, a super long way. And then finally, lead magnets, white papers, case studies, anything like that to demonstrate that you've been able to help people at a more sophisticated level, that's, that's really gonna help them kind of understand you know, whether or not this is the right law firm for them. And Courtney Buxton's in here too, and their firm, they're local to us in Mount Pleasant. And something that their firm does such a good job with is doing things in the community. And so for them being B2B, it is really important for them to highlight all the good that they do in the community because their clients are in the community. I'm not sure of the details of your practice, but I think it's really important to see how businesses give back to the community. and. I know that's been like a big driver for their business. They win awards, they like all of that, it all plays together. And so I think there's a lot of great opportunities for y'all um, just to enhance your website and probably just lean into stuff you're already doing. Thank you so much for this workshop. We are a small team and we're all virtual. Um, so our website is full of stock photos. Do you have any recommendations on how we can try to personalize that? Yeah, absolutely. So do you have, um, well, so just kind of talking from experience, we have firms that, that do this too. Um, getting consistency with the headshots kind of seems like a barrier that you can't overcome. And I would say that's okay. Just have everyone have a headshot on your website. It's okay if they're different. You can format that photo so that way like they're cropped, you know, by the, the same dimensions. So that way there is that consistency across the board. Um, and I would say in terms of like a like team photo, something like that, I think there's a lot of value into leaning into the fact that you're virtual. And so there's ways that you can demonstrate that on your website. Um, 
I think where I kind of recommend like maybe not using stock images is when you have the opportunity to like use topography and colors and like different sections on your site to break up the text without being super stock image heavy. And if you do use a stock image, use one that supports the text. So it's not something that's like a standalone, like we're trying to make this look like our law firm because that can be deceiving. Make it uh, representative of like your location or the clients that you serve um, or find a photo that looks like it could be one of your clients so that way they can put them in that person's shoes. I think the one thing we want you to avoid is it trying to make it look like it's a big firm by using a stock image of, you know, attorneys or business people. Awesome. I think we're out of time, but we will be in here for a little while longer until they kick us out. I'm not sure what time the next one starts, um, but feel free to ask us any other questions. And thank y'all so much for coming today.